Athletics has pretty much dominated my life. At every level of, at every level of education, playing sports has meant way more to me than anything else that I had going on. So elementary school to high school to CJEP to university, playing sports with my friends was my number one priority. But then I had to grow up and I had to get a real job. And then, but nothing changed. It's amazing, nothing changed. I end up at a place that has my own personal tennis courts and squash courts and gyms and a workout room. I end up at a place where I get to coach every day after school for two and a half decades, basketball and soccer, sports I love. I end up at a place where I become the director of athletics. And I get to be in charge of 27 different sports, 20, 27 different teams, over 19 different sports. So my whole life from top to bottom has been completely immersed in athletics and I love it. I love sports and I love competition. I also love to win. And I've been lucky enough in my life to actually do a lot of winning. So at every level, some of my early playing days to winning ribbons and medals that my mom still keeps in a drawer back at home. And then through my coaching days, we're lucky enough to have teams where we won a lot of championship trophies and a lot of banners. And honestly, the, my favorite part is probably the banners because the banners you get to sign. So I always love getting my teams. We get the banner, we bring it to practice, everyone signs a banner, and there's a little spot for me. And I get to take out my Sharpie and write, Coach Van Dyke, and I get to put this happy face with glasses. And I used to wear glasses, that's what the glasses are for. And I got, I'm not gonna lie to you, every time I see my signature and I look at a banner, I see that happy face with glasses, I feel joy. I have loved sports in my life, I have loved competition, and I have loved winning. But that doesn't make me unique. Everybody likes to win. Everyone loves winners, actually. Winners are envied, winners are respected, winners are admired. We build statues of winners. In fact, in high school, winning has become the default indicator of success in sports. So you just come back from a game, could be any game, rugby, football, whatever, you come back and someone asks you, how was the game? And you, how do you answer them? You tell them whether you won or lost. They didn't ask you whether you won or lost, but that's what you tell them. You just default to that every time. And I have a problem with this. I have a problem with this who won or who lost mentality, kind of hijacking what's important about sports. Now, now keep in mind, I am talking about high school. So I'm not talking about the pros. Okay, so the pros, yes, of course, Winning is super important. The final score, like there's careers that depend on it. There's millions of dollars depend on the final score. So I get it. We're not talking about the pros, but I'm talking about high school. And in high school, like the reason you have athletics in high school, it's not to win. High, athletics is supposed to be a vehicle, another vehicle for education. Athletics is another way for us to teach young people important life lessons. So it's really frustrating to me that this who won or who lost has become so important. So this talk, I have two objectives. The first objective is to prove to you that the who won who or who lost part of winning does not really have much value. But there is a flip side. I want to show you also that there is a part of winning, another aspect of winning that does have real value and is noble. Okay, so two different objectives. Now... To get to those objectives, we gotta go back in time a little bit. We have to ask ourselves a question, like how do we get here? Why do we love winning so much? I love to win, you love to win. Have you really asked yourself, stopped and asked yourself why? So about six months ago, I started to ask myself that question. And I actually started asking everybody that question. So I'm asking parents, I'm asking other coaches, I'm asking teachers, the kids that I coach. I could be at a dinner party, there's a pause in the conversation. I jump in, oh, hey, hey, why do you love winning? I'm asking random people. So I got lots and lots of great answers, fascinating stuff, stuff that I learned about myself. I, they learned about themselves, a nice conversation to have. But there's two answers that came up more than any of the other ones the two most popular answers. The first one was this. I love winning because society loves winning. And that kind of makes sense. I, I buy that. Society really values who won or who lost. So I get, well, you're a creature of society, so you value it too. But that's a terrible reason. Just because society values something doesn't mean you have to value it. Society valued slavery at one point, right? 
Does that mean you value slavery? Does that make slavery good? Of course not. So we as individuals, we can't be afraid of being better than society. In fact, you can make a strong argument that as individuals, it's our responsibility to be better in society because that's the only way society gets better anyway. So the second most popular answer, and actually this was the most popular, the one I heard the most, and it's a bit more nuanced. So I love winning because it validates all the effort and all the hard work I put in and practices and throughout the season. It sounds like it makes sense. But if you dig a little deeper, there's a serious flaw in that logic. And the flaw is this. Yes, you can control your performance, all the things that you do. You can do really well one day, but you can't control your opponent, therefore you can't control winning. You can't control what your opponent does, so you can't control winning. It happens all the time. You can play fantastic, but you still lose because your opponent just happened to be better that day. It happens. Like you can be running a 100-meter dash and you run your personal best. You run 9.8 seconds. You couldn't have run any faster, the best, best run of your life, but in lane four, Usain Bolt was also running. So, and he ran it in 9.5. So it wasn't close. Huge gap. So you lose. But you can't control Usain Bolt. It reminds me of a conversation I had with our senior hockey coach. He had just come back from the, uh, the Nationals. Our hockey team went to the Nationals. They made it to the finals, but they lost 4-3 in the finals. Heartbreaking loss, right? No. <laughs> this coach is telling me that was by far the best game we played all season. All the blood, sweat, and tears that we put on, all the stuff we didn't practice, it all came out. We played our best game in the biggest moment possible. So he felt validated. His players surely felt validated and had nothing to do with this little score at the end. Or you look at it the other way. Look at um, my basketball team. So we have, a game, we have a game in December. We go play this game. We walk into the gym, and we stink up the joint. We are Terrible. Our worst game of the year, we get outplayed, we get out-hustled, we get out-coached, everything. Everything is going wrong, so, but we end up winning. We win. We win because we're more talented than the other team. We win because we happen to be luckier on that day, and that's it. So do we feel validated by this, the team, as we shuffle off this, this court? Do we look up to the score and say, yeah, yeah, I feel validated. Look, my score is bigger than theirs. Of course not. All the players were thinking is we are running next practice because that was so bad. So this idea of winning equaling validation, no. Okay? Because like the hockey team, you can lose and you still feel validated. Or like my basketball team, you can win and you don't feel validated at all. So if it's not these high-minded concepts like societal influences or personal validation then, then what is it? So why do we love winning so much? And the answer is not that sophisticated. The answer is pretty simple. The answer is this. We love winning because winning makes us feel really, really good. That's it. That's the answer. Winning feels amazing, therefore we love it. That's the equation. What do you now? But that begs a question. It begs two questions. First question is, okay, then what specifically about the winning do you love? What, speci what specifically about the winning makes it so great? And the second question is, that, that specific reason then, is it really something, is it something good? Is it something so noble and righteous that winning deserves to be put up on this pedestal that we put it on? The answer is a little surprising because there are two reasons why winning makes us feel so good. One is psychological, and one is biological. And neither of those reasons is actually very noble or righteous. Look at the psychological one first. Humans are insecure beings. So anytime that we're able to beat someone and show we're better than them, that is great for our ego. That's it. It's fantastic. We love winning because it's great for our ego. In the last five years, my, uh, my soccer team, we won the national tournament for the first time in the history of the school. And then my basketball team, we won the provincial tournament for the first time and the second time and the third time in the history of the school. So how did that make me feel? Is that good for my ego? Oh, <laughs> you bet it was. I come to school, I have my medal under my shirt. I am not making this up. Where are my medal? I've, I am feeling huge. The chest is pumped out, and I'm walking big. Like, I'm making extra chips, trips to the gym so just I can look at those banners and see my little happy face and glasses up there. So, and why is that? Because nothing's better for my fragile ego 
than knowing that at one point, at one time, I was the best and you weren't. Second reason. Second reason is biological, or actually it's physiological. And this reason blows my mind. I find this incredible. Because what happens when you win, your brain actually shoots a chemical into your body that makes you feel good. (laughs) This is mind-blowing to me. So you win, and this chemical is called serotonin. So serotonin, it's, they're not sure if it's a neurotransmitter or if it's a hormone, but the medical profession agrees, and they have a nickname for it. It's the happy chemical because it's definitely linked to well-being and happiness in human beings. So that's what happens. You can't help feeling great. It's a chemical thing. It shoots in the happy chemical. Of course you feel great. Now, what I find also fascinating is why. Why would your brain do this? Why would your brain bother shooting in serotonin? And the answer is evolution. So back when we were all cavemen and cave women, winning didn't mean getting to stand on a podium and shaking some hands and smiling for the camera. Winning meant survival. That's what it was. So if a saber-toothed tiger came to attack your camp, you had to win to survive. If some other tribe comes to steal all your food, you had to win to survive. That's what it was about. So your brain, this fascinating, marvelous brain, natural selection creates a brain that when you win makes you feel this amazing feeling, shoots this chemical in, so that will help convince you to win the next time because your brain wants you to survive. It's crazy to me. Now, it's 2019. Does winning equal survival? Of course not. It doesn't, but your brain doesn't know that. The, the caveman brain, the lizard brain, the amygdala, it has no idea, right? So when you win, it's still shooting the same serotonin in, and you're still feeling fantastic. So basically, every time you win, you get this serotonin high. When you play sports, you're chasing that serotonin high. So we have the answer. We know why we love winning. It's, we get, it feeds our egos, and we get this nice dose of serotonin that makes us feel really great and happy. But, and this might be a little controversial, it can be said that when you combine a psychological dependency with an involuntary physiological reaction, that sounds a lot like addiction. (laughs) So anything, so this great feeling that we get when we win, the fact that it's got so much in common with just satisfying an addiction, clearly it's not noble and clearly it's not righteous. So we've covered covered the first objective, the whole idea of who won or who lost doesn't have much value. In fact, and we could have kind of guessed that, winning, winning doesn't make us better people, and we don't learn a lot from winning. In fact, when you win, when you, are better, when you are better than that other guy, what you get is you get this psychologically and physiologically great feeling, a feeling that has a lot in common with the feeling that a smoker gets when they get their first cigarette. So there's just not that much value there. Which brings me to the second objective. Now, this is, this is happier, okay? This is a little more optimistic about the whole idea of winning because there is an aspect of winning that is a positive which there's value in it, and it's this. The true value of winning is that it feels so good when you do win, ego boost and serotonin high, that you will work your hardest to get there. So without trying to win, without that idea of trying to win, you would never push yourself to your absolute maximum. You would never reach your full potential. And that's the answer. That's the good thing about winning. It reminds me of a Bugs Bunny cartoon. I'm a big Bugs Bunny fan, obviously. It reminds me of a Bugs Bunny cartoon. Bugs Bunny goes to a racetrack. Goes to a racetrack. It's not for horses, though. It's for dogs. Okay? So the greyhounds race around this track. But what happens is when you open the gate, the greyhounds don't just take off. What happens, you have this little mechanical rabbit. There's this rail that goes all the way around the track, and when the gates open, this mechanical rabbit takes off, huge speed, and the greyhounds fly out after it, running as fast as they possibly can. Now, the point is not for the greyhounds to catch that rabbit, of course not. The point is to make the greyhounds run as fast as they possibly can. Okay? So the rabbit, the rabbit is a tease to the greyhounds. The rabbit is a great target, and that's what winning is to us. Winning is a tease. Winning is an amazing target for us to work really hard. The true value of winning is not determined by who won or who lost, but rather 
and how it drives us to reach our utmost potential. I'm going to say that again. The true value of winning is not determined by who won or who lost, by how it drives us to reach our utmost potential. In the, in the words of legendary Canadian basketball Hall of Famer Steve Nash, there's nothing in life that's really black or white, except winning or losing. So maybe that's why people gravitate to it so much. In the words of Hall of Fame quarterback Roger Staubach, winning isn't about getting ahead of others. Winning is getting ahead of yourself. In the words of Arnold Palmer, legendary golfer, winning isn't everything, but wanting to is. And in the words of Porky Pig, one of Bugs Bunny's best friends, bidi bidi bidi, that's all, folks. Thank you. Thank you.